Hi everybody, this is Chris Hendren at Oceanside Photo and Telescope. Today we're going to talk about aligning and stacking files in Nebulosity 4. Nebulosity 4 can be purchased through OPT. It's a very powerful program. You can do everything from capturing images with a DSLR or CCD camera, aligning and combining and calibrating the images, all the way to post-processing and delivering a final image. Today we're just going to simplify it. We're going to use data that was recorded with a previous video on pre-processing with Adobe Photoshop. We're going to take the data for this. If you go to the batch menu here, the selection is align and combine images. We want to break this into two steps. So the first step is to save each file individually and align them. You want to choose the method here in alignment of translation, rotation, and scale. Because this was shot with a camera lens that has some distortion and it was on a tracking mount that doesn't have perfect tracking, if you just use no alignment or translation you run the risk that your stars aren't going to line up. If your polar alignment is off a little bit you can have field rotation and if you don't align at all, you can wind up with star trails, which is not the point of this image. So once again, we have save each file selected, translation, rotation, and scale, and we want to leave fine-tuned star location selected here. If we hit OK, it brings up the folder where we saved the images before. Hold down the shift and select all of these images hit open. You can now see all of the images noted here in this window on the right side and we have the first image loaded. What we want to do is move around in the frame and locate a bright star to align on. We're giving nebulosity an alignment point to pivot the rest of the stars in the image around. This one will do nicely. If I click on this star, it now draws a red circle around it. This is Nebulosity's way of trying to guess which star you're trying to track on. If you think it's correct, click on it again. After each time you click on it, it will move to the next frame automatically. You'll notice that the stars are moving. That's the tracking errors I was referencing earlier. That means that my mount wasn't tracking perfectly. As you can see from this point here, we're now looking at the first frame and my cursor is where the star is on the last frame. So it moved quite a bit. We want to align on that point first, then move to the opposite end of the frame. The main reason why you want to pick two stars on opposite sides of the frame, it gives you a bigger baseline to adjust for rotation and correction. If you pick two stars that are too close together and you make a mistake, you can wind up with stars that don't align in all of your frames. So I'm going to pick this star here. Now it puts a green circle around it. I keep clicking on it frame by frame in order to tell Nebulosity here's the second alignment point we want to align on. Now you'll notice there isn't any circle. Nebulosity is going to pause for a little bit as it's calculating the movement of each frame. It's mathematically taking those two points you've designated and lining them up. Doing so is going to align every other star in the frame as accurately as possible. Okay, we have now let Nebulosity 4 align all the frames for us. If we go to the File tab here and go to Open File, we can now see some new files here with the prefix align on them. They're saved as FITS format, which is the native format for Nebulosity. These files now have all the stars aligned based on the two alignment stars you selected. We want to stack these images 
and combine them. One of the things you can see here is a short satellite track. This is a defect in the image, not because it wasn't really there recorded, but because you don't really want to have satellite tracks in your image. So the stacking method we choose will actually allow us to correct for that. We go to the same batch menu, go to align and combine images. In this case, we want to save stack and set alignment method to none. This now opens up a whole new window of stacking functions. Average is the simplest, where it takes the average value of every frame and stacks it together and assigns the average value to that pixel. But as you saw with that satellite track, you don't necessarily want that. What that will do is it'll take every image, average them together, the satellite track will get fainter and closer to the average value, but it will still be in there. When you post process, you're gonna see that satellite still in your image. You want to use then one of these standard deviation filters. Standard deviation is a fairly simple concept. It takes the parts of the images that are closest to the middle of the range, and averages them. But if a pixel is either too hot or too cold, it will throw it out and only do an average of the remaining frames. As we have six files here, that particular satellite track only showed up on one file, so by using this, it will throw it out and make that disappear. You can use different strengths of standard deviation filters. The smaller the number, the more pixels they'll reject off the midline of the image. But for this exercise, we'll use a standard deviation filter of 1.5. Now we want to select the six files that were created when we aligned the original six TIFF images. This one, we simply open all six. Nebulosity does the rest. If you look at each individual frame, you're going to see different satellites move into different images, but they never line up all in the same place on every image. What that means is Nebulosity is able to calculate that those are bad information and subtract them from the final stacked image. Down at the bottom, Nebulosity says it's fixing pixels. What that means is it's mathematically looking at every pixel on every image, calculating the average, but if any pixel is too bright or too dark, it throws it out. All we have to do here is wait for it to finish its job. Okay, Nebulosity has now finished stacking all the images. It's going to save as a new fits file. In this case, I'm gonna use the title Milky Way Wide so that I can remember the final name of this when I take it into Photoshop for post-processing. If we click Save, we're now going to see the benefit of the stack. If you look at the noise level here in the dark part of the image, even though it's brighter, you can easily tell that it's a lot cleaner. The other thing is you don't see any of the satellites that we're moving through here. So the standard deviation filter did its job in removing those. At this point, we have a FITS file. Again, this is native format for Nebulosity 4. But when we move it over to Photoshop for post-processing, we want to save it as a TIFF file. This is a simple operation. You just go to the File tab at the top and save as 16-bit per color TIFF file. You can now name that file whatever you want. Make sure to save it in the folder of your choice. You're ready to take it over to Photoshop to do post-processing and get a final image. All right, that's all for today. Thank you for listening. Once again, stay tuned to this YouTube channel for more videos on processing, astrophotography gear, and more content related to the night sky. Please visit us at our website, www.optcorp.com. Please send us email at opt at optcorp.com. And from all of us here at Oceanside Photo and Telescope, keep looking up. Hey, this is Steven Hendren from Oceanside Photo and Telescope. Hope you found this video both fun and informative. It's actually part two of a three-part series, so be sure to click here if you want to see the first part. We'll be posting part three on our YouTube channel next Monday. 
If you're still interested in seeing more videos about processing astrophotography, we have a video here on how to do simple image processing from start to finish. Be sure to keep an eye on this channel by subscribing. Don't be afraid to give a like, comment, and share this video with all of your friends. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day. Thank you.